Hello, Brett Etheridge here, founder of Dominate Test Prep and the industry's leading executive assessment prep course. I am glad you're here where in this video, we are just gonna give you an opportunity to practice, to try your hand at a fairly challenging executive assessment algebra question, one involving mixtures. So I hope you are ready. Get your scratch paper and a pen, get, or maybe a pencil so you can kind of erase if you make a mistake. And don't worry, I'm gonna coach you through the question itself. And by the way, for more practice, for more free practice, head over to dominatetestprep.com forward slash what's on the EA, where we have a free six question quiz for you, where you can try some more practice questions and get thorough detailed uh, video answer explanations for each of those questions as well. But in this video, we are going to look at this question. So here you go. We have solution Y that is 30% liquid X and 70% water. If two kilograms of water evaporate from eight kilograms of solution Y and two kilograms of solution Y are added back to the remaining six kilograms of, li of liquid, what percent of this new solution is liquid X and you have your answer choices. So it is a problem solving question, fairly straightforward in how it is addressed, and yet there are certainly challenging components to it. So go ahead, press pause, give it a try on your own, see how you do, and we'll come back and talk about it together. Okay, so how did you do? It's challenging, and there are a few things about it that make it particularly challenging, and I wanna just give you some solutions to make it a lot easier for you. One has to do with the approach itself, which I'll walk you through, uh, which is really the best approach for mixture questions of this type in general. And then one has to do with something that you can sort of do to cheat, to make, to make clear in your own mind what's really going on. Now, when you look at the question itself, it actually doesn't lend itself well to some of the non-standard strategies that I teach. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a few other videos here on this YouTube channel where I, I hint at and even teach a few of the non-standard strategies. Of course, we cover them in detail in my course, but basically ways that you can sort of get at right answers in non-traditional ways, maybe make up some numbers, maybe use the answer choices to your advantage. We can't really do that with the way this particular question is worded, and that's part of what makes it hard. We just sort of have to actually do the work, do the algebra, do the arithmetic, figure this out. So that's part of what makes it challenging. The other thing that makes it challenging is the fact that we have solution Y that contains liquid X, like that's confusing. X itself sort of looks like its own variable. We have variables that aren't really variables. They're calling it liquid Y or solution Y. But, you know, so I think the trick is let's, let's stop dealing in X's and Y's and call things just, you know, what they are. And what I mean by that is we have this generic explanation of what solution Y contains, and it contains 70% water, H2O, and 30% solution X, liquid X. Well, what does that mean? Like, what does liquid X mean? What if we just get rid of the variable X and call it something else? It's called liquid X. What if I call it oil, right? That's a liquid. So I'm just gonna rename it so that I don't get confused in my own mind about X's and Y's and all that stuff. Does that make sense? You have complete liberty to do something like that. So it is 30% oil. Okay, yes, it says liquid X, but I'm just gonna assume that's oil or acid or alcohol or like whatever you wanna call it. We have one liquid and water. That's the key understanding. Okay, so we have this generic understanding and the next thing you always wanna do on mixture problems is take um, the percentages and make them concrete with real numbers. And we're told how to do that. So now the mixture begins. In, this is sort of like my generic explanation of what is contained in solution Y, but now I have to actually solve the problem. So here's what I have. I have my starting point, right? I have eight ounces of a particular solution, 
of, of solution Y. And what I want to do is I want to start by absolutely now working with real numbers. No longer am I dealing with percentages. Okay, fine, it's 0.3 oil, like 30% oil. Well, what does that actually mean if I have eight actual ounces? Like how many ounces of oil do I actually have? Well, I have eight times 0.3, right? 2.4. So I literally have 2.4 ounces of oil. Liquid X, you understand what I'm saying, oil. Which means I have 5.6 ounces of water. Okay, so that's what I currently have. That's what I am starting with. And now, working with those real numbers, I can evaporate two ounces of H2O. Okay, so that now is gonna produce, so like I start with this, I'm gonna evaporate just H2O, what am I left with? Okay, well now what I'm left with is the same 2.4 ounces of oil. That has not changed, right? I think that's a key understanding that maybe you missed. When I evaporate water, only water disappears. It does not influence the oil, the oil stays. 2.4 ounces is still in the new container. What has gone down is the total solution has gone down by two ounces exclusively with water. Water has go gone down. So like before, this cup was full, right? And I like to illustrate mixtures with cups, bowls, whatever you want to think about it as. It used to be full of eight ounces. Now it's gone down by two ounces. So my water level is a lot lower because I have 5.6 minus two. I now only have 3.6 ounces of water because I evaporated two ounces. Okay, fine. So I started there, I evaporated two ounces and now I'm here and now I have to add what? This is where it gets a little bit confusing. I am adding two more ounces of Solution Y. Well, what is solution Y's ratio? Solution Y's ratio is 30% oil. What's 30% of two? 0.6. So of the two new ounces of solution Y that I'm gonna be adding back in, 0.6 of them are my oil, which means 1.4 of them are my water. Real numbers. That's the key to mixture problems. Stop thinking as percentages and variables and all that type of stuff and let's make it concrete with real numbers. So now, I started with eight ounces. I got rid of a bunch of water, so now I have this. I have this empty spot at the top of my container that needs to be filled with this. So what does that result in? It results in a new mixture, right? I'm just gonna kind of do a nice, yeah, I think green's gonna to be too hard to see. Let me, let me do it in blue. I've got my new final solution that is 2.4 oil plus my new 0.6 oil or three ounces of oil. And I have my 3.6 water plus my new 1.4 water equals five actual ounces of water. That is my final new solution. Back up to the original eight ounces. It's just that the amount in it, the ratios have changed. By how much? And then the question is, how much or what percentage of the total, right? Percentage of total, that's the denominator, eight ounces, eight total ounces. What percentage of that is solution X? We called it oil, doesn't matter, or liquid X, we're calling it oil. Three of those ounces is oil, so three eighths. And which answer choice is three eighths? Hopefully you know that conversion because three eighths is a common fraction that we should know, but that's gonna equal 37 and a half percent, which is answer choice. C. So well done if you got that originally. If you didn't, hopefully you now see how to get there. It's a lot going on, friends. It's, uh, I mean, it's a lot.
what makes this challenging, right? But now you see how to do it. And I hope your takeaway messages are you know, several things. One, make your life easier on any type of question on the executive assessment, but certainly the harder ones, especially the ones involving variables that aren't really variables, right? That's what made this annoying. Solution Y and Liquid X, and those aren't really variables, but they're calling them something, like use your own words. Um, as I did here, that will make your life a lot easier. And then you just have to be systematic, especially on mixture problems, working with real numbers whenever possible. I would say in conclusion, as much fun as it was to work on this question, as much as it's fun to stretch our brain a little bit, uh, two things. One, depending on the score you are shooting for, you may never see a hard question like this, depending on your abilities. And you might not need to get the question like this right to still get the score that will get you into your target school. So I always just say, you know, assess your current abilities and really what your goals are. And you may or may not even need to play in the sandbox, so to speak. But if you do need to play in the sandbox because you are shooting for a higher score, now you see how to do it. The other thing that I would say too, though, is of the word problems that may appear on the executive assessment, mixtures could appear, certainly. But I wouldn't say it's the most common type of word problem that you could see. Be prepared for it if you're going to be shooting for the higher scores especially because you could see it. But again, there are some other question types, other word problem sets, for example, uh, are a fairly common one. Work rate types of questions might be a little bit more common than mixture problems. Um, but that said, mixtures are worth knowing as well. Just make sure that you're spending your time on the highest yielding question types uh, and strategies, and we certainly address those and front end those in our courses. So if you're looking for more help, again, head over to dominatetestprep.com for you know, more information about our complete executive assessment prep course. But with that, if you have any questions here, post them below and I will answer them. And see you next time on a future video. Click that subscribe button so that you're alerted so that I can continue working with you and empowering you to dominate the executive assessment.